Hey, this is Ryan from webeminence.com and I'm answering the question, should I use WordPress or a website builder? And I know what you're probably thinking, isn't WordPress a website builder? And yet, yeah, you can use WordPress to build a website, but technically it's not a website builder. The term website builder typically refers to hosted applications that you pay for monthly and they literally allow you to drag and drop elements around the screen to create your website. Some of the more popular website builders are Squarespace, Weebly, Wix. I've actually done reviews on those three website builders and several others, so you can check those out on my other videos. Website builders are really the simplest option for building your website yourself, but WordPress is really a step up because it gives you more flexibility and scalability over the long term. You can actually read my blog post and I give more information about the advantages of using WordPress, but keep in mind that if you decide to use it, there is a steeper learning curve, so it's gonna take you longer to learn how to use it than if you use a website builder, or you can choose to pay someone to build your WordPress website for you. The purpose of this video is really to help you decide which one is right for you, whether you're ready to take a step towards using WordPress or maybe a website builder is more appropriate for you. So let's go ahead to the computer and I'm gonna help you decide which one's right for you. Now to install WordPress, you're gonna to have to download the software from wordpress.org uh, and you will need to purchase web hosting from a hosting provider and then install the software on your web host. I'm not gonna go into detail on how to do that because I do have another video that explains how to install WordPress on HostGator hosting, which is the hosting provider I recommend. I also have a free service where I install WordPress for you for free if you purchase hosting through my HostGator affiliate link where I receive a commission. So I'll also link to that. Once WordPress is installed, you can go to your domain slash WP dash admin and it's going to take you to a screen like this where you can log in. After you log in, you're taken to the WordPress dashboard which looks like this. Uh, on the left hand side you see the menu with all the different links and then on the right side is basically your work area. WordPress is really built on pages and posts so if you click on post you'll see all your blog posts or you can create new blog posts there and pages and posts work uh, using a text editor so it's different than most website builders where you drag and drop the different elements to create your pages with WordPress you choose a design theme and then the main content areas of your pages are built using this visual editor so if you click on visual you can see the page visually with all the formatting and the pictures you can use these tools here to modify the content, kind of like a Word document where you align the text, change the formatting, add pictures. And for those of you who know HTML code and CSS code, you have access to the source code of the page so you can go in and modify the code to give the page the exact format that you're looking for. You can also go into the CSS file to modify the styling of the website. So that's more for advanced users who know HTML and CSS. For people who are just building a website using the visual editor, you're just gonna type in your text, format it, and add pictures. And I'm not gonna go into detail on how that works because I have other videos for that too, which I'll link to, but I just wanna show you that it is different than a website builder. You're not gonna be able to use a drag and drop interface unless you have a special WordPress theme that allows that. So WordPress is really built on themes and that's one of the major advantages of using WordPress over using a website builder is there's actually hundreds or maybe even thousands of theme developers who are third parties who create themes for WordPress. So to choose a theme you actually go on the left hand side under appearance you click on themes. And here you see the themes that I have installed on this WordPress installation and I'll click on add new and here you can see you can search for themes using different filters and this page is going to search for the themes that are available on wordpress.org so I can set some of these filters and click search and you'll see uh, actually 1200 items came up for that search and I can preview the theme 
and then I can install it for free and it'll be immediately installed on my website. You can also go to third-party developers who sell premium themes and they usually have more features and maybe a little bit more advanced design. So that's one of the major advantages of WordPress over a website builder. Usually with website builders, you're going to be limited to uh, maybe 100 themes, maybe 50, just depending on how many themes a website builder provides. With WordPress, it's virtually unlimited because there's thousands of themes, new ones being created every day, and you can actually create a totally custom theme and install it into WordPress. Most themes, and especially premium themes that you pay for, are going to have a control panel. And I use themes from a company called ElegantThemes.com, and they have this e-panel. It allows you to set a lot of options like adding a logo, changing the color scheme. You can click on the home page tab and just click these buttons to turn different features on and off. You can change the navigation on this control panel. There's layout settings. You can change colors throughout the theme. And there's some SEO settings you can customize, like adding custom titles and meta descriptions to different pages. So this control panel is very similar to what you'd see on many website builders, and it does come with many premium WordPress themes and maybe some of the free themes also. If your theme doesn't have a control panel like this, you can still go and click on Customize under the Appearance menu. And that's going to allow you to make some basic changes like uh, changing some of the colors, the background image, and modifying the navigation menus. The navigation in WordPress is typically controlled under the appearance menu. And then you click on menus. And that allows you to change the menu structure of your navigation at the top of your page and any other navigation that's available with your WordPress theme. And you can drag these to reorder them and move them to the right to make them sub-menus. So that's very similar to the way most website builders work also. Another important aspect of WordPress is the fact that you can expand the capabilities of your website using plugins. I'm on the WordPress.org plugin directory and you can see there's over 30,000 plugins right now. And they're under many different categories. There's contact forms, there's social plugins, there are plugins that speed up your website. And just to give you an idea of some of the plugins that I use, you can scroll down on the left side of my WordPress dashboard. I have an SEO plugin I'm using. I have one called Optin Skin that allows me to put this form on the sidebar of my blog and that allows me to collect email addresses into my email list when people request my website startup guide so that's all part of the plugin I don't really have to do much but just customize the image and the text and the plugin allows me to insert that right into my website there's another example of a plugin on a website that I created for a client who does trainings and seminars so they wanted to allow their visitors to book classes online. So this is their website and this whole section down below is actually a booking plugin from a company called Bookio. So by logging into their Bookio account and then integrating it into their website, they're able to integrate this booking functionality on their website so that people can browse the different classes, click book, and even select a date on the calendar and go all the way to the point of making payment. So it integrates with PayPal and different payment processors to complete purchases. So you can see the, the functionality that a plugin gives. It would cost thousands of dollars to create something like this custom on your website, and most website builders aren't going to allow it, but this is just one plugin that's available with WordPress. And this one actually does cost um, 20 or $30 per month, a lot of plugins are free, some of them cost money, but it's way cheaper than developing this functionality uh, using custom code. You'd have to spend thousands. There's a few other plugins I use on my website. There's one called Due to Mobile, which creates a mobile version of my website. Shareaholic is for 
adding social buttons like Twitter, Facebook, uh, Pinterest on my blog posts. Smart YouTube allows me to easily add videos. Um, performance is to speed up my website. And WordFence is a security plugin. So these are all uh, free or paid plugins that I use to just extend the functionality of my website. So the plugins are a big reason why WordPress has a lot more functionality and expandability than a website builder. Very few website builders allow third parties to create applications to extend the functionality of websites the way that WordPress does with plugins. So overall, website builders are great for people who want to use a drag and drop interface and keep it very simple. But I'd recommend taking the step up to WordPress for those of you who need to really extend the functionality of your website using plugins, or maybe you want a really specific look for your website, so you want to have more options in the design of your website, and you can achieve the look you want with a WordPress theme. If you are interested in using WordPress, but you don't have hosting yet, you can go over to my free WordPress install page where I describe the steps to allow me to install WordPress for you so you don't have to worry about installing it. You can just uh, send me your hosting information. I'll install it for you, and you can get started building your website. I'll also give you access to a premium theme of your choice. And if you want to try to install WordPress on your own, uh, I recommend using HostGator Hosting, and you can watch the video that I linked to that shows how to install WordPress on HostGator Hosting. So I hope that sheds some light on the differences between website builders and WordPress and maybe helps you decide which one is a better fit for your website. If you have any questions after watching this, feel free to contact me. Just post a comment on the video or on my blog post, or you can even send me an email through my website, and I'll do my best to answer the questions. Make sure to check out some of my other videos on website builders if you do decide to go that route. You can watch some of my reviews on website builders and see which ones I recommend. I also have some other videos on WordPress since I didn't go into too much detail in this video about how to make posts and how to edit text and add pictures. You can watch some of those other videos to get more of the details on how WordPress actually works. So go ahead and click on some of those other videos and we will see you on the next one.